So this morning, what we're going to remind ourselves is if someone dies and they leave behind something, what is going to be done to that wealth? Number one. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين يوصيكم الله في أولادكم للذكر مثل حظ الأنثيين فإن كن نساء فوق اثنتين فلهن ثلثا ما ترك وإن كانت واحدة فلها النصف لأبويه لكل واحد منهما السدس ولأبويه لكل واحد منهما السدس مما ترك إن كان له ولد فإن لم يكن له ولد وورثه أبواه فلأمه الثلث فإن كان له إخوة فلأمه السدس من بعد وصية يوصي بها أو دين آبا وأبناؤكم لا تدرون أيهم أقرب لكم نفعا فريضة من الله إن الله كان عليما حكيما بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear brothers and sisters in Islam I would like to welcome you to another session of our Fajr Reflection We are still, alhamdulillah, and traveling through Surah An-Nisa and especially uh, the ayat and the verses that are related to the concept or the laws of inheritance and this morning, inshallah ta'ala uh, we will be dealing with the ayat of inheritance, especially uh, the first long ayah that we have recited this morning. And if we look at the laws relating to Islamic inheritance, and if we look at the ayat and hadith that are dealing with them, they are not many in number. But all the books that have been written about this, uh, the, the laws relating to Islamic inheritance, they have only been extracted from these few verses. This ayah, for example, يُوصِيكُمُ اللَّهُ فِي أَوْلَادِكُمْ لِلذَّكَرِ مِثْلُ حَظِّ الْأُنْثَيَيْنِ The following ayah, وَلَكُمْ نِصْفُ مَا تَرَكَ أَزْوَاجُكُمْ And the last ayah of Surah An-Nisa, يَسْتَفْتُونَكَ قُولِ اللَّهُ يُفْتِيكُمْ فِي الْكَلَالَةِ إِنْ إِمْرُؤٌ هَلَكَ لَيْسَ لَهُ وَلَدِ And only few ahadith. And those are the verses and also the ahadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to the Prophet and all these amazing, mashallah, laws have been extracted from them. So now, bi'idnillahi ta'ala, I am going to uh, remind myself and all of you and what was the purpose, what was the purpose of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealing, for example, the ayat of inheritance. And it was said, Sa'ad ibn Rabi' radiyallahu anhu, the great companion, Sa'ad ibn Rabi' who was from the Ansar, the wealthy companion, he was martyred in the battle of Uhud. And when he was martyred in the battle of Uhud, he left behind a wife and also two daughters. And also he has left behind his wife. So what happened was his brother came and he took everything, the whole wealth. His brother took the whole uh, estate and property, whatever that he has left. And the wife of Sa'ad ibn Rabi' went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam complaining about the situation. And she was saying to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, Sa'ad was martyred in the battle of Uhud. And then what happened was his brother came and when his brother came, he took everything. Now my daughters have got nothing and no one is gonna ever come, no one is ever gonna come to marry them because they have no money at all. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, so the wife wasn't complaining about herself. She didn't say, I have not been given anything. She was concerned with, with her daughters. She said, my daughters don't have anything. 
and everything that their father left behind has been they have been everything was taken by by their uncle so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam didn't have any rulings regarding this matter he said to her i will i will see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says regarding this matter. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verses, يُوصِيكُمُ اللَّهُ فِي أَوْلَادِكُمْ لِلذَّكَرِ مِثْلُ حَظِّ الْأُنْثَيَيْنِ فَإِن كُنَّ نِسَاءً فَوْقَ ثْنَتَيْنِ فَلَهُنَّ ثُلُثَ مَا تَرَكْ So what happened now is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said to the wife of Sa'ad ibn al-Rabi' and call Sa'ad's brother. I want to see him right now. So Sa'ad's brother came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said to him, and I want you to give the two daughters of Sa'ad, meaning your nieces, two thirds of the wealth. Look at, mashallah, how Allah subhanahu wa how just Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. He said, two thirds of the wealth. And as an example, and imagine if Sa'ad ibn al Rabi' left behind, let's say, his wealth was like 10 million pounds. And that was what needed to be distributed among his heirs. That would have meant almost seven million of that wealth would have been given to his two daughters, subhanAllah, out of the 10 million. So right now what happened is the two, the, the two daughters, they have been given through thin of the wealth. And the mother, the mother was given one eighth. The mother was given one eighth. Whatever that was left after that was given to the, uh, to the brother who took the wealth at the beginning, the whole wealth. So inshallah ta'ala, what we are going to look at this morning as well is the virtue or the importance of this knowledge, the knowledge of al-mawarith, or the laws relating to Islamic inheritance. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, أَرْحَمُ أُمَّتِي بِأُمَّتِي أَبُو بَكْرِ وَأَشَدُّهُمْ فِي أَمْرِ اللَّهِ عُمَرِ وَأَصْدَقُهُمْ حَيَاءً عُثْمَانِ وَأَقْرَأُهُمْ لِكِتَابِ اللَّهِ أُبَيُّ بْنُ كَعْبِ وَأَفْرَضُهُمْ زيد بن ثابت وأعلمهم بالحلال والحرام معاذ بن جبل ألا وإن لكل أمة أمينا وإن أمين هذه الأمة أبو عبيدة ابن الجراح The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has said the following The most merciful of my ummah towards my ummah is Abu Bakr Abu Bakr mashallah was very very merciful to the ummah And the one who adheres most sternly to the religion of Allah is Umar and the most sincere of them in shyness and modesty is Uthman. The best judge is Ali radiallahu anhu. The best in reciting the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is another narration. The best in reciting the book of Allah is Ubay ibn Ka'b. The most knowledgeable of what is lawful and unlawful is Mu'adh ibn Jabal. Mu'adh ibn Jabal was a great faqih. And the most knowledgeable of the rules of inheritance is Zayd ibn Thabit. Remember Zayd ibn Thabit? When the Prophet ﷺ moved to Medina, he was very young. Very, very young. It was said like in uh, the battle of, let's say, the battle of Badr, he was, he was at almost like 10 years old or 11 years old. And he was one of the people who was taught how to read and write after the battle of, of, of Badr. But he was very, very intelligent, Zayd ibn Thabit. And he was from among the uh, scribes of the, the Wahi, the Quran. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also has asked him and tasked him to learn the Jewish language and he was very good at it. So Zayd ibn Thabit uh, عنه, he was expert when it comes to the laws of inheritance. If someone asks you who was the most knowledgeable from the companions when it comes to the laws of inheritance, you're going to say Zayd ibn Thabit. He was number one. So Zayd ibn Thabit and every nation, the Prophet sallam, has a trust, the Prophet sallam, has said, and every nation has a trustworthy guardian and the trustworthy guardian of this ummah is Abu Ubaidah Amir ibn al-Jarrah. So this morning what we're going to remind ourselves is someone dies, if someone dies and they leave behind something, what is going to be done to that wealth? Number one, number one, the person's, the person's janaza, your janaza has to be prepared from your own wealth, from your own wealth. Imagine someone has left behind 10,000 pounds. One of the first things that we're going to do with this money is we're going to look at, okay, this person's janazah has to be sorted. Where are we going to get the money from? His own money. Imagine the janazah, the preparation of the janazah costs us 4,000 pounds. So the 10,000 pounds that he left behind, 4,000 will be taken out for the janazah. Okay, what comes after that? We will look at the debts that he left behind. 
Has he, does he owe people anything? Yes. Imagine he owes 2,000 pounds. That means we will take that 2,000 out from the, the state. So right now, what, the, what he has left behind. So how much of the money has gone so far? 4,000 and 2,006. Okay, we're going to look at, we're going to look at, has he left any will? Okay, and we, if he has left some will and he said, for example, such and such should be given that amount, we will say, okay, one third of the wealth that he has left behind can be given as a will. And then after that also is given, when all of that is cleared, whatever that is left after that is what is going to be distributed among the inheritors. After that. Okay, so it doesn't mean like if someone dies and they leave some money behind, that that money straight away go, it will go to the, inheritance, the inheritors. No, we will look at, we have to take the cost of the, the preparation of the janazah, the debts that the person owes, and then after that, if there was a will, and then after that, whatever remains, that is what is going to be distributed among, among the uh, inheritors. So right now, what we are going to also look at, which is very important, is because sometimes, especially these days, and people do not have knowledge about these important matters regarding the laws of inheritance. And there are certain things that we need to pay attention to. For example, the following. What are the causes of entitlement to inheritance? The causes of entitlement to inheritance are three. Only three reasons. Three causes. Number one is nikah. Meaning, the two people were married to one another. There was a valid marriage contract. Okay, that's number one. The other one is what is known as lineage. Okay, so one of them is nikah. Okay, the other one is lineage, nasab, which is very important, that blood relation between the two persons. And the next, the last one is what is known as alwala. But this is, this actually and uh, it's not relevant to us nowadays because we do not have people who are considered to be slaves okay and those people who have freed uh, the, those who have and uh, actually and uh, those who have set them free so alwala that's another reason, another cause so these are the three causes of entitlement to inheritance we may also ask ourselves what are the impediments to inheritance the imp impediment to inheritance are three Number one is enslavement. If someone is a slave, he will not be able to inherit anything. Number two is murder. If someone kills, okay, if someone, imagine someone kills one of his relatives. If that happens, you will not be able to inherit from the wealth of that person. Okay, even if you killed him indirectly, even if you killed him indirectly. Okay, you didn't even kill him directly, you killed him indirectly. Okay, and number three, Number three is the difference of religion. Okay, this actually particular matter right now, the difference of religion, this may, this actually is quite relevant these days. Imagine if one of your children, if may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our kids, if one of our children apostates from the religion and becomes an atheist, that child is not gonna be entitled to the inheritance. So very important. Imagine one of your kids left Islam and said, I'm no longer a Muslim. If you were to die, he will not be entitled to your inheritance. The rest of your children who are still Muslims, they are the ones who will inherit you. That child who left Islam will not be allowed to inherit your wealth. Okay, so difference of religion. This is another reason why someone is not gonna be allowed to inherit. So right now, inshallah ta'ala, we are going to go through the verse, the long ayah. So alhamdulillah, we have talked about these important matters. And now we are going to be looking at the ayah itself. You see, kumullahu fi awladikum lidhakari mithlu haddil unthayain. Fa in kunna nisa an fawqath natayni, falahunna thulutha ma tarak. Wa in kanat wahidatan, falahan nis, wa li abawayhi li kulli wahidin, minhuma sudusu min ma tarak. So we're going to look at what, what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying in this ayah. So this is the following. Allah instructs you concerning the inheritance of your children. To the male, a portion equal to that of two females. It is from the rahmah of Allah, from the mercy of Allah, He has taken the responsibility of dividing the shares. Imagine if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, 
it's your responsibility to divide the shares of your inheritors. It would have been very difficult for us. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's the one who took this upon himself. And he said, I am going to do it for you. Okay? Because this is going to be the most just way of doing it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لِذَّكَرِ مِثْلُ حَظِّ الْأُنْثَيَيْنِ And then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, to the male, a portion equal to that of two females. If there are only daughters, more than two, their share is two-thirds of the state. And then Allah goes on, if there is only one daughter, her share is a half. Imagine a father died, he left behind one daughter as children. Okay. The only child he had was one daughter. And then he left behind also his wife. So what is the daughter going to be given? She's going to be given half of his wealth. Imagine he had 10 million pounds. 5 million will be given to that daughter. So those people who claim that Islam oppresses women, if Islam doesn't give women their share, just imagine, look at, the, look at his, the daughter, what was given to her. And there are many cases where the girls or where the females inherit more than the males. Okay? More than the males. So right now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if the, 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 the inheritor, the person who's going to inherit was just a single daughter, what's going to happen? She's going to be given a half of the wealth. For parents, a sixth share of the state goes to each if the deceased left children. If he left no children, the parents are the only heirs. For example, the mother has a third. But if the deceased left siblings, the mother has a sixth. You can see how technical this ayah is and the rules and the laws regarding inheritance, but they're very, very clear. But if the deceased left siblings, the mother has a sixth. The distribution in all cases is after the payment of bequests and debts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, with regard to your parents and your children, you do not know which of them is going to be is going to benefit you more. You know, your children or your parents. You do not know who is, with regard to your parents and your children, you do not know which of them is going to benefit you more. These fixed shares, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, are ordained by Allah and is all-knowing most wise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's how he concluded the ayah. So this is the first ayah. Okay, the long ayah that deals with the shares of inheritance. So what is the fixed shares that each one is going to get? So alhamdulillah, this lesson, I mean the laws of inheritance are very technical and the less, uh, our fajr reflection is not going to be sufficient. So I'm just, I've just given you uh, an overview of some of the issues relating to, uh, the, relating to the laws of inheritance. And, but... If somebody wants to really learn them and study them, they have to go to a sheikh who teaches the books of fiqh, and then you can study the laws of inheritance. And even in the books of fiqh and the laws of inheritance, inheritance that are mentioned, they are not enough. Alhamdulillah, the ulama, they have authored books that are very specific, okay, for the laws of inheritance. And then the teacher will teach you how to practically also work out. For example, how much inheritance is someone is entitled to and so forth. Alhamdulillah, I teach in the books of fiqh and the shafi al madhab. And recently, mashallah, I was, I was doing, uh, and I was doing the, and, uh, the laws of inheritance with our sisters. And just before Ramadan, we have completed and, and the, the laws regarding the, inherit, the, the, the laws of inheritance and which were mentioned in the book. And we used to also do some exercises. For example, a parent, someone dies, he leaves behind such and such and such. Who's going to be entitled to something? Who will be excluded? There are people who will be excluded, for example, if certain people are there and so forth. Let me tell you this. This is very important, inshallah ta'ala. There are certain people who can never be excluded <coughs> from the inheritance unless one of the three things that we have mentioned becomes true, true with, with them, okay? Meaning, if the person hasn't left, if the person left Islam, or he caused the death of the person who he was going to inherit, or the person became slave. So if those three things are not there, and the person is free from those three things, these individuals, they will always have to be given something from the inheritance. Who are these people? The parents. The parents, they can never be dropped. So the mother and the father. Okay, imagine you died and your mother and your father are allowed. 
are, are still alive. No one can get rid of them. Okay, so they will be inheriting you. They will take something from the inheritance. Also, your children. Okay, your children. That means your daughters and your sons. No one can get rid of them. Also, your spouse. So these are the five individuals. No one can get rid of them. Okay, they will always be entitled to your inheritance. So who are they? The mother, the father, your son, your son or sons, your daughter or daughters, and your spouse. If these people are alive, after you die, they will inherit you. Mother, father, son or sons, daughter or daughters, or your wife and your wife. They will, or your wives. <laughs> with the S, okay, or your wives, okay, wife or wives, so okay, if they're alive, no one can get rid of them, okay, so inshallah ta'ala, they will, they will be able to, they, they, will, they will be entitled to your inheritance, what will they get, we will find out tomorrow, your wife, or if your wife dies, what are you going to get, how much, what will be your share, inshallah ta'ala, we'll find out tomorrow, jazakumullah khairan, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.